Chetan Maini, the co-founder and vice chairman at Sun Mobility, joining in on the show right now. Chetan, hi, good morning. Good to have you on the show. You just heard from the minister, Nitin Gadkari himself. No deadline for EV switch and no intentions to ban petrol or diesel vehicles. What's your response to the fresh statements coming in on EVs and electric mobility from the minister? Well, I think that in the last 60 days to 90 days, the government actually has set a lot of positive uh, philosophy, uh, policies, uh, you know, on the road. The first thing is the the budget really talked about a 10,000 crore frame uh, uh, subsidy uh, uh, po policy. Uh, it also um, looked at the re reduction of GST uh, on this area, uh, both for charging stations as well as uh, vehicles. Um, and uh, it also looked at tax benefits uh, for people who would buy electric. So I think that the important thing is that um, these are going to coexist and uh, a new industry is going to need certain incentives and support to kickstart it. So um, uh, while there isn't a deadline in, on this area, there is already a direction on this front. Um, I think the deadlines enable the industry to work quicker. Uh, this is a change that's going to happen globally. And India has an opportunity to lead this change, like it has done it in the past for two-wheelers as well as small cars. And so, um, uh, uh, you know, a little disappointed that there's no deadline, but very positive about the fact that uh, there are clear indications of how electric mobility will be supported by the government. Say that this is contrary to the EV game plan, which was recently outlined by Niti Aayog. And you know, then what happens to the government's target of 30% EV penetration by 2030 now? Yes, I agree with you. I think that uh, it does put the industry in a little bit of dilemma in terms of investments that they would have to look at. And uh, having a clearer policy around that would have driven this. Uh, but I think what the stimulus that has been given recently for the electric vehicle industry will maybe start to put a lot of these solutions in place on this area. Uh, maybe this is something the government would need to relook and revisit um, uh, in, the, uh, in the light of the fact that the auto industry is down. I think there has been an area to keep the entire industry uh, in a way of balance right now uh, and not upset it too much. Uh, and so therefore, uh, we need to think of both ways. We need to think of the short term, what we do in the next one year, which is maybe something for the current industry. We need to think what we're doing two to five years from today is going to build and invest in a new area of electric mobility. And we need, need to see what we're going to do five to 10 years from today, where we look at a transformation in the, in the industry. All three need to happen even today at different levels. And so it's, not, it's, it's important that the industry and the policies look at all three aspects and not just the immediate and now. You know, ever since we saw, we've seen that uh, change in GST and incentives on loans to EVs, um, is there any change in the market? Um, uh, you know, Chetan, are you seeing any immediate tangible impact of that? And also, where are you on plans, you know, given Details of your tie up with Uber, we're hearing about fresh investment interest as well in Uber or partnerships from people like the Munjals as well. Um, you know, where are you on some of those plans in terms of just uh, the kind of speed with which we may see some of these products coming to market? Well, I think that the large uh, uh, push in the country is going to be in shared mobility. And electric and shared mobility work very well because we can now give consumers a true advantage on the cost as well as performance in terms of you know higher, easier for driving of electric vehicles as well as for consumer experience. So you're creating a win-win situation for consumers, for mobility solution providers like Uber, and the big. The big piece that was missing is the energy infrastructure piece. How do you start to cater to this? And Sun Mobility try to create this open architecture infrastructure piece that says we can partner with any OEM and any mobility solution provider and thereby enable electric mobility for the first time to truly make business sense in markets like India. And just on a kind of future um forward-looking comment from you in terms of whether or not you feel, uh, given now that we're hearing that there may not be any deadline on EVs, would the acceptance um, be lower in terms of how fast consumers shift to some of those electric vehicles, even on the cost front, uh, for example? Um, how are you anticipating things to pan out? I think we can take this 
it depends how the industry takes this. You know, very often when there has been slowdown, um, some industries have focused on the uh, now in year one year. Some industries have said, listen, anyway, there is going to be a slowdown. It will take a year to normally react and come across. Let's focus on two to five years. And if the industry does that, then I think there could be a lot of investments and a lot of resources that can actually be moved towards electric mobility. And so therefore, a couple of years from today, when the industry starts to come back, everyone is ready from an electric mobility point of view. And the kind of growth rates we could see could be tremendous. So I actually think it's about how we perceive it and how the industry perceives it. And it's potentially an area of opportunity. I do, however, think that, that in line with what the government has already done, if they could add a couple more things which are very minimum on the exchanger but very impactful on the consumer, that can go a long way. For example, while the GST on electric vehicles has come down, the GST on services for charging or battery swapping are still at 18%. Now, if you're looking at a shared mobility driver who's a rickshaw driver or someone who's doing deliveries on a two-wheeler using electric, if, if he or she has to pay 18% tax on that, that's not meaningful when the rest of the transportation industry is at 5%. So I think little shifts, little small policies without putting deadlines that can continue, that can be an enabler for the industry, uh, which would be very helpful. Chetan, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for taking the time out and helping us analyze how to read what Nitin Gadkari had to tell us exclusively just last evening.